Hi again. Um, um, I want to leave for a moment all the technical aspects and functional features of Edenpierre and address another topic that I find really important for the project's future. Uh, I'm going to talk about marketing and open source project. Uh, I want to clarify at first, uh, everything that I say here is based on academic research. I try to keep the bias as minimal as possible. I, I am not trying to point fingers at anyone in the community. I'm just trying to give an objective analysis of Edenpierre and yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna try to go through it quite fast. I know it's late, everyone's tired, and but if you have any questions during the way, please stop me. And so I'm gonna divide the presentation with the current state of the topic in the literature. I'm gonna present the barriers and risks of, of marketing. Then I'm gonna talk a bit about open source. Uh, what is marketing and how do other open source projects manage marketing within their projects? And then I'm going to talk specifically about Edenpure. So uh, why is marketing so underestimated in open source software projects? I, I started doing this research and it was, uh, I was surprised by the lack of literature that you find about the topic in academic. Uh, open source is no, is, it's, it's not a recent phenomenon. It's, it's been here since years, but it seems that nobody has really gone deep into this. Uh, I think most of you saw that, uh, like I posted in the forums uh, requesting for participants in interviews to address this topic. I wanted to find the barriers. Uh, from the participants uh, that who responded the interview, 61% uh, were technically driven community members and 38 were, were had different roles like functional users, implementers, consultants. And 54% of the participants benefit directly from Edenpeer or Postgres. There were uh, respondents from 13 different open source projects. Uh, so eight respondents were from Edenpeer, five were from other projects. And the first uh, result that I got is it seems that uh, nobody cares about the topic. Uh, the interview, the survey was open for more than six months and during that time I gathered only 13 respondents from which seven were proactively responding the survey and six were directly approached by me telling them please can you your input is quite important and it could be really beneficial and they did it that way. Uh, this show me a bit how is the feeling in the communities. I, I asked for the same in the Postgres community. They have over 2,000 members and I got just three guys from those projects responding. So it was quite interesting to see that yeah, there, there seems to be like a lack of interest. In uh, that was my first uh, finding. Uh, this is a huge barrier and among the respondents, spe spe especially the developers, they all manifest like apathy toward the topic. They say uh, marketing is, is unnecessary, it is uh, counterintuitive, it, is, it goes against the open source movement. And it was really interesting to see that, uh, yeah, there is really a lack of interest among communities. Uh, 
It is important to clarify that uh, business owners and implementers tend to be more open towards the topic, but their motivations might be seen as a threat for developers because they they tend to think that marketing is for selling purposes, for easing the tasks for them to sell, and that's not the purpose of marketing the project itself. That should be done by them. They should be in charge of getting customers, not the project. So uh, the second problem was the lack of resources. Resources were especially money, time, and expertise. Depending on the type of project, for example, in Postgres, the general feeling was that nobody within the community had the expertise to run a marketing strategy or something like that. Within other projects, more like Eden Pierre, more driven to business and everything, uh, people thought, okay, there has to be someone in the community who can do it. it then it's just a matter of time, maybe, or of the willingness to do it. The third barrier that I found was that it, there is a lot of uh, fear of losing control of the project. This was uh, backed also, I check uh, the forums of other open source projects such as Debian, Ubuntu, Kubernetes, and all of them think like if we engage in marketing activities, if there's a firm involving in the project, we will lose control of it and it will die. So there is a huge resistance towards marketing because of that fear. Uh, another important finding was the misconception of the word marketing. Everybody thinks is is just about selling. Uh, this was actually one, this is a quote from one of the respondents. Uh, it's only for selling and promising non-existent futures. And the developers think that it's a, it, it is a diminishing task, that it's soft skills and somebody with a lower level should do it. That's what you feel from the responses. Uh, Nithya Roth, she is the CEO of a big open source foundation. She referred, she addresses to this problem as uh, perhaps we just need to use another word and then people will, will be more willing to commit to this kind of initiatives. Uh, but that if we explain clearly what it is about, they will be more likely to engage in such initiatives. Another important quote that I found was that the idea that we are not selling anything in an open source project is, is, is not real because you are selling ideas. You are trying to convince people to participate and contribute to your community and you are asking for their time, their resources, their attention, and this is something really valuable for everyone. Uh, so in summary, the main barriers were lack of interest, lack of resources, fear of losing control, and a general misconception of the word marketing. Uh, something interesting that I found while looking at it was that uh, when an open source community has a well-defined culture and mission, uh, companies within that community tend to be more uh, willing to engage in co-marketing efforts, so to create a win-win relationship. When these are not clearly defined, uh, they tend to think only about their benefit and they leave aside the project. Uh, so with the idea that the misconception is a huge problem with this topic, uh, I would like to clarify what is marketing. So as I mentioned before, marketing is usually seen as a way of selling and just creating revenue. But in the recent literature and everything, they mention that marketing should make selling unnecessary. You should 
address to your customer in a way that uh, your product or your project fits them so well that they are willing to buy. And also the new literature says that marketing is the functional business, uh, the business function that deals with customer relationship more than any other department in a project company or yeah. Uh, they also clarify that people tend to think that marketing is only useful for profit organizations, but there are many examples of non-profit organizations such as churches, uh, <coughs> hospitals, universities who engage in marketing activities because you need to attract people. Uh, the marketing environment, this is a quick overview. Uh, there's the macro environment, that's, those are the factors that affect the market but the company or project have no control over it, so they are political, economical, social, technological. You cannot control those factors. There's, then there's the micro environment, those are the external environment but more like closer to the project, so that's uh, buyers, competitors, suppliers, consumers. And then there's the internal environment. There you have employees, assets, technology, all your internal strengths and weaknesses. An important key when marketing open source is branding. So branding is the perception a person holds in, in their mind about a company, a product, or a project. Branding is, is really hard to manage because it's not it, not, it doesn't depend on the company. They can try to show something, but at the end it is in the people's mind, so you have no control over it. However, it is really important because uh, uh, without branding, Coca-Cola is just sugar, water, and that's it. But people give a more meaningful meaning about Coca-Cola. It is a lifestyle or it, it is the best in the world. But when you perform, conduct a blind test, they, don't, they can't differentiate the taste for real. So that's all about the, the branding. Yep. Uh, so that's what I want to mention about marketing. Now I'm going to move to open source. So I found many frameworks of open source software business ecosystems. Uh, the two main ones are vendor driven. We see these in projects such as Odo, MySQL. They have a huge company behind and they control everything, but at the end the software is open source. Here there is not a problem to do marketing because the power is centralized uh, and they do marketing as any other company. So the, the issue is not here, but the issue comes when you have a community driven project. Here the power is decentralized, uh, the control over the project is not clear, nobody can take decisions by itself because then the community can go against it and you really need to protect the community because usually it's the biggest asset. You get a workforce, a set of uh, skillful developers that will be too expensive to hire for a single company so you really have to protect that community. Uh, with that in mind, the goal of marketing in open source should focus on increasing brand awareness and credibility in the market. Uh, because even when the project is not a product, it cannot be sold, it is a brand as any other brand. Like Linux is a brand and it fulfills the same functions as any other brand in the world and it is the same for every open source project. Uh, what, what projects tend to do when they try to gather resources such as money is to involve a company in the project. A study showed that when a company involves in a project, uh, in the short term the popularity increases quite fast because they get all the muscle, the marketing muscle from the company. 
but in the long term they start to create deadlines uh, they start to move the projects goals towards selling and getting back the return on of investment and this leads to a long-term issues with quality code uh, which in the end usually kills the project so the community tends to leave those projects and the project just dies uh, there are different approaches used by firms when they are participants of open source communities uh, I found this framework really simple so I wanted to show you there is a parasitic approach these are the companies who get into the community and the firm wins but the project the community loses so they tend to benefit from the project and they do not care if they harm the project on the way uh, there's a symbiotic approach then the firm wins and the community wins so everything the firm does is trying to make the project grows and benefit everyone those are the goal ones that every branding strategy should aim for and then there's the commensalistic this is the like an in-between approach it's like firm wins but the community is indifferent they don't harm the community but they try to spend or use it as less resources as possible so they don't create any harm but at the same time they don't create any good these uh, tend to go this way after a long time and the community normally creates a bad image of those companies because they see them as free riders uh, so how do other open source software projects do marketing uh, what I found on the way is uh, on the web with many projects is that first of all there is the is they is the task of contributing so making contributing as easier as possible is key for this purpose if if it's complicated to read the code if their documentation is incomplete if if, if installing the project is really difficult and it has many tricks and you have to talk to 10 specialists then they will not join that project what I found also is that the first marketing tool of any open source project is the code uh, for example developers come to a project they check the code if the code is poor or badly written or old-fashioned they decide to go to another project I think we have all experienced that when we try to find an API to use for an, a plugin or something we check something and we see that it was last updated 10 years ago then we decide to leave because that's not supported or it has many bugs things like that uh, in with that in mind the wiki and website becomes really es essential for any project because that's the first usually that's the first thing that the user gets to the potential consumer gets to if they open the website they open the wiki if they find a website with many broken links they will run away they will say okay this is not useful I cannot find anything here it, this is hidden or outdated another important issue th this was key in the Linux er, every Linux distro that I found everything that interacts with the user is marketing they do not mean here necessarily the user interface but they mean here for example the community culture if a person comes to a forum and asks a question and the community reacts really uh, rude or they say okay that question has been asked 10,000 times you have to go and look for it then they tend to run away because they feel like okay this is not welcoming I don't want to belong to this community so yeah this is a key issue uh, transparency 
was key in every project, also especially on the Linux one. Uh, I found, for example, that Ubuntu, you can sponsor things and you can check all the financial statements, what they do with the money. Everything is done openly through marketing communities. Everything is open and that creates trust within the community. And again, communication is essential. Uh, as anything in the open source project, this is not one way. The leaders communicating something. This is a two-way communication all the time. The leader says something to the community. The community gives feedback. So those things were really key for every open source project that I found. And so how do they do it? They have a well-established community culture, values, and standards. All of them are public. Uh, they engage in community inclusive marketing and community generated marketing usually. That's the goal for the projects because then the lack of resources like uh, money for example is it's less because the community is the one generating the marketing content. So for example blogs, podcasts, all of that is used there. You can see that a lot in Ubuntu for example. Uh, they engage in co-marketing efforts. Uh, they tend to look internally for expertise uh, with marketing and what I found is that in the small projects, technically driven, they also go outwards to an umbrella organization. So like Linux Foundation, yeah, organizations like that. Uh, leverage community skills is key. They tend, for example, if somebody in the community is great at public speaking, they use that resource and they send them like to open source uh, conferences to talk about the project, to spread the world, uh, the word to the world. And that, that's really important. Everything is within the community. Everything is generated for and by the community. Uh, this was also key. The, they tend to create marketing teams, but they have to align the ideas of the technical steering leaders. If the ideas of the marketing team diverge too much from the technical leaders, they will leave. And we have seen that happening. They just create a fork and leave the project. So that was es essential. Uh, in those committees or sub-communities, uh, they try to have at least one representative for every aspect. So one representative from implementers, one from developers, one from consultants, one for end users. So everybody feels represented. Uh, yep. uh, somebody is playing this buyer model. Uh, so what they say is that in open source, uh, first you create awareness of the project, then the person knows about the project and goes further and try to see if they feel affinity with the project, if the values are in line with those, if he agrees with the culture. And then he tries the project. Once he tried it, if, if he likes it, then he adopts the project. And once he adopts and he really enjoys the experience, he refers to people and then the circle starts again. Uh, my SQL is an example of this, but it also means that uh, you can start at any of these points. Uh, my SQL, for example, when they started, they didn't have to market databases. Databases were already known. They didn't have to tell everyone what is a database. So they focused their marketing strategy on explaining com to companies that open source databases were as safe as the proprietary ones, uh, that they were reliable. That was what my C called it. Uh, some examples of community generated content that I mentioned before, the Node Foundation, they have a podcast, Enterprise Conversation podcast on Spotify and YouTube. And they highlight that companies such as Netflix, Twitter, Google uses Node.js. 
uh, Hyperledger also, they have a blog, developer showcase blog. It is quite active. Uh, they publish two or three posts per month. And that's also the way to document, so to give to the audience knowledge. And, and it is quite successful. Uh, Kubernetes have, has case studies, so they benefit from well-known projects of uh, apps like Spotify or AppDirect. So they engage in these co-marketing efforts to leverage from the image that those applications have in the market. There are more traditional ways. IBM paid, uh, I don't remember how much, for this uh, carpet, uh, marketing campaign. They spray painted in San Francisco the Peace Love Linux all over the streets. It cost them like a fine of $100,000, I think. But the wording they generated in the public was successful. So it was a huge success. However, this uh, didn't come for free. That was after IBM donated uh, a billion a billion dollars to Linux, so they really wanted the project to be known. So not every project has that kind of uh, capital injection, so then you go back to the standard tools. Uh, so in summary for that part, uh, a clear mission is key in every open source project. Uh, the guidelines, the code of conduct, uh, clearly defined goals, all those projects that are successfully marketing have all those things clearly defined in the website, in the wiki. Uh, they all have an easy explanation of how to join and help the project, what can you do, where can you find the things. And to keep transparency and authenticity, uh, everything is open, everything is published. And this also reduces the feeling of being hijacked or taken over by a company. Uh, now, by going to Edenpeer, I divided the research in three phases. So a discovery phase, what is the actual status of Edenpeer? For this part, I check all the forums content, website content, wiki, what I found on the web, uh, secondary resources. And I also conducted uh, an interview with Carlos. All of these will be published. Uh, I have to wait. This was made as a thesis for an MBA, so I have to wait to defend it, and it is approved. And then I can publish it. Uh, the identity phase, uh, then it is about, OK, we know what we have now, but we have to know what, where are we, and what do we want to be. And then it's a redefinition of the project, of the missions, of the goals. And then an execution phase. Um, yeah. So in the discovery phase, I did an internal analysis. Uh, by talking to Carlos and everything, the, the first thing is uh, Eden Pierre was born mm, mostly because Eden Pierre engaged in <coughs> marketing efforts. And those efforts went against the values of the top com uh, contributors. Uh, for example, they were requesting the uh, technical leader at that moment, you have to push this into the code. We need this functionality because it will make selling much easier for us. But it was an unfinished code. It was a disrupted code. And then they got against it. They say, I find this dishonest. We cannot put disrupting code in the, in the core. And at the end, it just led that it, they created a fork. So that's what I mean, that when all the people is not in line with the purpose, uh, the community just breaks down. Another thing that I found, uh, there is no clear or active community leader in the project. Uh, this can be seen by the fact that the last conference was, was held four years ago. Uh, we see that everyone, uh, or you can see in the forums that everyone asks, uh, for example, Carlos, when is going to be the next conference? And 
and that also speaks about uh, this, the next point, the community should be more proactive. I, all the projects that I mentioned before tend to make a clear distinction between technical leaders and, for, and community leaders because the time and expertise of the technical leaders are well placed in technical aspects. If they have the time to focus on code, on code improvement, and peer review, and, and all those secondary tasks or complementary tasks are delegated to someone who takes care of that, then the project goes further. Um, there is no active marketing right now besides the war of marketing. However, this is quite a strong in Eden Peer with uh, awards such as the Bossy Awards. You can find Eden Peer in many, the top 10 open source ERPs in the market, the, the 20 ERP systems that you didn't know. So word of marketing is quite a strong, but the project is not doing anything actively about it. And what I found also was that uh, this is taken from the wiki. Uh, so the budget of Eden Pierre, I think everybody trusts that it, it is being well used or being used or anything, but there's not an open view of it. Nobody knows how much money is there. Nobody knows how it's being used. And that, from the previous research, tends to mm, push away potential donors. They don't know what's happening with the money, so they stop, or they never don uh, donate anything. So this is a key issue that should be addressed. Uh, this was also something that I found. Uh, it, this is in Spanish, but the image of the project is being heavily misused by companies. Uh, this is a company in Panama. I have never seen them in the forums. And they say that they are authorized distributors of Eden Pier. And, and then the question is authorized by whom? You, you don't need authorization to distribute Eden Pier. <laughs> So, so, and they are using the project logo and everything, and that creates a, a, a conflict. There's also a company in India that says that they are the uh, global leader in Eden Pier ERP. That company has never been in Jira or the forums, and and, and this is a clear proof of the issue of uh, the misusage of the image because there is a lack of guidelines, uh, trademark guidelines are not existing and should be uh, created. The brand identity of the project, uh, brand identity is the image that the project or the community has of itself. Uh, it is a high quality, transparent, collaborative and supportive project. And the brand image, what it, you can find outside, is similar. Uh, everybody agrees that it's a high quality project, uh, but there's a belief that it's slowly, uh, that it grows slow, uh, slowly and steady, and it's not easy to contribute. That can be found in a lot of places, and, but everyone mentions the fact that the community is really supportive, and that's a great asset. Uh, and some people express the fear of the dependency on its leaders. Uh, some people mentioned the boss factor in the, during the interviews. So this is a great fear among the community, within the community. Uh, what I found researching the brand image is that uh, the community culture, the supportive culture, and the open source nature, and the, the leaders are seen as the greatest assets of the project. So that should be not compromised by any marketing strategy or by any means. Regarding the main tools that I mentioned before, uh, the code, uh, the code is quite good. It has a great image. It is of high quality. In that aspect, Eden Pierre is performing really well. The documentation could be better. There are There is some documentation, but there are many things that should be documented or are outdated. Uh, that should be improved. The easiness of to contribute, uh, 
I know because of the nature of the project, the learning curve is really steep. It's not easy. But, but just for beginners, beginners is not really easy either. Do not, you don't have to contribute great things from the beginning, but to get in the project is not really easy. The community culture, although it is not clearly defined or public, it is defined with the communication guidelines. Everything is there, it's just not in one single place. There are no mission, vision, and goals defined. And the transparency, it is, is good. Besides the small issue that I mentioned before, everything is published, the IRC meetings are published, everything is done through JIRA, open forums, so Eden Pierre scores quite good there. A quick show on the external analysis, I want to show that just to show the importance of marketing. Uh, in the world right now, the political factors, uh, there are more than 350 government open source policy, policy initiatives by 2010 uh, worldwide. Some policies mention that uh, open source should be mandatory. Others just mention that it is encouraged to engage, uh, to select, to choose open source solutions over proprietary ones. Uh, Bulgaria is a particular case. They, they had a law uh, since 2016, I think, that states that every software made by the government has to be open source. And the justification is that the taxpayers pay for that, so it should be public and accessible by them. Uh, this shows uh, Europe is the greatest one in the open source initiatives, then Asia and Latin America. North America is starting to engage. I found a memorandum from the uh, head of departments of the US government where they mentioned that uh, every software made by the government should engage in open source initiatives to stop reinventing the wheel and start reusing code from other departments. Another important factor for the economic factors is that this is the revenue, the distribution of global open source software revenue by market segments. These are companies generating revenue from services related to the open source project. And as you can see, it has tripled over four years. And it is expected to grow to $33 billion by 2022. So the demand is growing. Also, because of the demand is growing and everything, this is from GitHub. 40% uh, more of open source projects from since 2070 to 2018, there were 40% more. So the demand is growing, but also it is becoming a highly competitive market. Uh, social factors. Uh, by Stack Overflow show that only 36% of developers uh, have never contributed to open source, but that is a big number when you combine it with the 28 that contribute less than once per year. That means that maybe they are not motivated enough to contribute. That is a problem, a potential problem. This is a report by Red Hat. Uh, it shows the importance of enterprise open software or what the company sees as a strategic uh, importance of having enterprise open source solutions. So as you can see, only 1% think that it's not important at all. Uh, this, is, this is a great, I find it great. You cannot make 99% of the people agree on something that is not like what color is the sky or something like this. So it shows that it's becoming really important. Uh, they also show that more companies are likely to engage in open source uh, solutions and implement open source solutions. So as I said, the demand is growing. Uh, the microenvironment quite fast. Uh, this is a summary of a competitive analysis. I compare the project to Adam Pierre, Open Bravo and Odo. 
Uh, I think everyone knows Open Bravo is a fork from Compare, so technically is similar. What I found important from this, uh, Open Bravo and Odoo engage much more on marketing activities than the other two, but this is easily explained by the fact that they are vendor-driven software and not community-driven like Adempier and Edempier. Uh, every project has its value proposition, although focuses on user experience and usability. Open Bravo focuses on improving agility and they focus on the vertical market of retailers and restaurants. Adam Pierre, for what I found on the web, uh, they market the benefits. There can be different ways of express the values, it functional or exper experimental, what the user experiences with the project. The focus here is on functional features. The problem with this approach is that that is the easiest thing to copy. Every, all of these projects have the same functionality almost. So if your marketing campaign basis on that, that every project has the same things. So that I found on the website, they say why Adam Pierre? And they say we have a CRM, we are an ERP, we can have manufacturing, but actually all of the solutions can provide the same. Uh, here is the PAD rating. This is from OpenHop and this is from PAD. PAD Research is a company based on Canada that uh, does review from business software. They, they don't express how they get to this core, but it is there and it's accessible, accessible for everyone. You can see that item peer is the has the highest core and uh, they are checking the quality of the code, the functionality, the reliability. So as I said, Edenpierre has a strong word of mouth marketing. It's just the project uh, that is not trying to do anything. Also the numbers on the social media, as I said before, these two are vendor driven, so they have a huge marketing muscle. Uh, the strengths of Adempier and Edempier are similar. The project is purely open source. Uh, they are both community driven. Uh, they have both active communities. Their community is smaller than the ones stated by Odo, but I'm not sure. They say that they put that number in the website. I'm not sure if that is completely true or they are just hiding a lot of people. Uh, this number was based on the Gitters channel of Adempier, the active users in the Gitters channel. And this number, uh, that's really hard to get because Edenpier does not track any numbers. Uh, this was a number calculated by Carlos based on forums users, Jira users, contributors. Uh, yep. This is a uh, this creates the strengths. Uh, the strengths of Edenpier are the open source uh, nature, uh, the community driven, the, the community, the high quality image, and the high users rating. The weaknesses that I found against the others was the documentation could be better. The community relies too much on the project leaders and this creates bottlenecks for everything that it's tried to do there. And there are a lot of blocks on the web, but they are spread. The, the project should try to look for a way to gather them, gather them in one place. Uh, another part of the microenvironment is the consumers and producers in open source. Oh, in open source projects, these two coalesce into one because the consumer is, actually, is also the one producing the code. Uh, the internal motivation for developers. 79% uh, of developers uh, contribute to open source projects to feel competent and self-determined. I, I know these two don't add up, but the respondents could choose different options. <laughs> 20, almost 28 uh, 
contributed when they feel uh, identified with a community. The external motivations, what I found, 88% uh, try to invest in human capital. This means improving the skill base, developing skills. Uh, some of them try to improve their English skills and also peer recognition and self-marketing. This number was quite high among students. Uh, they try to increase the developing development skills by participating in open source projects. Uh, what they found as a threat was the lack of training opportunities and the lack of documentation. Uh, the companies that engage in open source projects, they find the ease to develop IT projects uh, as the greatest advantage because it takes advantage of group, think, group thinking and make a better solution. This, is, this shows uh, the leading drivers. So you can see, for example, cost saving, avoid vendor lock-ins, free up employee time. Uh, yeah. This is a summary of everything that I have uh, uh, talked about before, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Uh, based on this, uh, when you see the two approaches, the open source, the real open source approach and the open core model that uses Odo and Open Bravo, you get an open, uh, open source version really limited when you try to use everything you have to pay. Uh, this does not avoid the vendor lock-in. When you implement Odo and you want to grow, then you are already locked by your door and you have to pay them. So that's something really important to mention in everything that Eden Pierre does when marketing the project. The open sourceness of the project is a key aspect. Uh, the target market. I think the target market uh, should be skilled IT professionals and IT students. Uh, who want to gain coding experience, uh, learn from a skillful community, and want to participate in an open source project. Uh, and companies that implement or are consultants of an ERP and want freedom from vendors and reduce the cost of development. Here it's important that the target market is not the end users. Uh, that, as I said before, that should be attracted by the implementing companies. But the target market is tho are those companies like almost everyone here who produce code, generate tests, uh, who contribute back to the project. So based on this, the positioning should be based, as I mentioned, in the truly open source nature of the project. The Eden Pierre has a strong uh, believe in attribution and recognition. Everyone's name is mentioned. Everyone's contribution is mentioned by name. Uh, the high quality focus on code and the supportive community. With that in mind, I can skip it. I propose the following mission for the project. This was made with a initial mission that Carlos mentioned. So it's to help companies around the world to grow with freedom. And to do this, we focus on high quality code and we have established a culture that supports, recognizes, and respects our great community so they can share their knowledge with the world. That is a proposed mission of the project. The vision is to be the world's best free open source enterprise software which inspires organizations to share and construct win-win relationships with the community. Uh, the goal is to have a slim core surrounded by a range of plugins to accompany any business need. Our promise is to provide reliable software and stay open source to bring software freedom to the world. Uh, this last part was based on a goal that was set since the beginning of Eden Pierre by Hensin and Carlos. They want to have a slim core, take away all the business functionality and base everything with plugins. So you can have a clear development framework without the ERP system. Uh, sorry. <laughs> the values uh, of the project, those are already stated in the communication guidelines. So it's fairness, respect, diversity, collaboration, inclusivity, transparency, quality, freedom, attribution, and think of the greater good. 
Those are not proposed by me. I just gather everything that is there and summarize it. Uh, the value proposition is it impure helps organizations grow with freedom by providing them high quality software without restrictions made by a worldwide community of highly skilled members. That's a value proposition against other projects. Uh, in the execution phase, I propose six tag lines. They can be more. Uh, so you can see them Eden Pierre, let's do it together because freedom is forever, software that serves you free, software that helps you grow with freedom. Freedom is a terrible thing to lose and because you deserve to be free. Those are proposals. Uh, with that in mind, the project needs to decide a brand voice. Uh, with everything that I found, it should be professional and friendly. That's actually how it looks right now in the forums. But then every website, social media page should be updated to make sure that they follow that brand voice. And the recommendations are that update the website and social media to make newcomers feel welcome and appreciated. Uh, publish brand guidelines, this is key, so companies don't misuse the image. Uh, to publish midterm goals so the whole community knows where does the project want to go and how can I help to reach that goal. Right now, people develop different things. There's not like a clear goal for what I can see. Uh, participate in open source events to spread the word. Uh, the sponsor requests, I think, by making the budget more, trans more open, uh, the sponsors could make requests of what to do with the money. Always, I cannot stress this enough, the brand guidelines and the project guidelines. Uh, for example, if they want to remove the bottleneck of the peer review, they could sponsor that and donate money so they make sure that Carlos uh, can have some free time or available time to review. The guidelines are really important because it, is, it has to be clear that if you sponsor with that in mind is, uh, okay, you can choose the tickets you want. If you want Carlos to review a particular ticket of your company, then you hire Carlos, not the project. That has to be clearly distinguished between the, with the project guidelines. And as I said before, hold conference more often. This is, uh, uh, I was really happy to see Frank's talk because of this. I think this is a great opportunity if we create a relationship with universities. If you engage students in the project, you create really great potential contributors in the future, really skilled people. Uh, so the project should try to support students. They, should, they can make proposals of potential thesis uh, projects like what Thomas said, uh, we could create a website with, yeah, with this kind of things. Uh, we can create a section in the website for new con uh, contributions. There are a lot of blog pages. I found one from Philippines. It is really interesting. He has documented a lot of things that are not documented officially by Eden Pierre. If we make use of those resources, uh, the project can benefit from that. Uh, customer reviews and testimonials could be useful, again, with the brand line, with the guidelines in mind, because we should avoid any company for exploiting their position within the project. Uh, if some company has, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say, for example, BX Service works with Carlos, it should be really important that BX Service does not exploit this fact to take advantage of the project image in their favor. So it should be clearly distinguish the companies and the project. Uh, as I said before, trademark guidelines is essential for the project. Uh, we could call programmers, such as star documentation specialists, the tester of the month, the developer of the month, and then the one who contributes more at the end gets a free t-shirt or something like that to engage people to contribute, but with clearly guidelines. We want this, this, you have to follow these uh, rules, uh, standards. We don't want noise or just people pushing 
broken stuff, but yep. And I suggest to create a marketing committee. Everything that I said here is just a proposal. Because of the project's nature, I cannot decide that by myself. Carlos cannot decide that by himself. It, it, it has to be decided by the community, implemented by the community. The marketing committee should, uh, could make a poll to decide which tagline is the best or if they modify something that I mentioned here. That's really important. And, and it's part of what I mentioned before of the community being more proactive. Uh, the last thing that I want to mention, the co-branding initiatives. I found this law of extension of branding. Uh, the easiest way to destroy a brand is to put its name on everything. So we have to avoid the problem of uh, a specific implementation saying this is Eden Peer, because if they fail, the whole image of the project goes undermined. We could use co-branding efforts like Powered By, like distros uh, approaches like Linux or like Por uh, WordPress does, but you have to clearly distinguish the quality of each one implementation and the project. Uh, yeah, as I said, this is just a proposal. The war is over. What I mentioned here is the war of open source against proprietary software is over and open source won. Uh, companies such as Microsoft that once said that open source was cancer are already opening the source of their calculator and everything. So the war is over, but then the projects need to start realizing that they need to attract contributors and they need marketing to do that. And that's why I decided to show this here. And that's it. Uh, thank you. If you have any questions, just let me know.